Hello, welcome back to Spark at Home for today. We're going to be continuing our story in 1 Samuel. Special thanks to Joe Lum, one of our uh, Sunday Kids Ministry leaders who's done these fabulous illustrations we're going to see very soon. Uh, Last week we heard how the people rejected God as king. They wanted a human king like everyone else. Um, Samuel tried to tell them that uh, it'd be trouble for them to have a king like everyone else, but they insisted they wanted a king. So God decided to give them a king just like they wanted. We're going to see what happens uh, as we continue in 1 Samuel. Now God told Samuel he'd meet a man. And that very day Samuel met a man named Saul. Saul was looking for some donkeys he'd lost. As soon as Samuel saw Saul, God told him this was the man who would be king. Samuel said to Saul, God has chosen you to be king. Don't worry, the donkeys you have lost have been found. Now go home and wait. Seven days later, Samuel gathered all the people together. Samuel called for Saul. Saul! But Saul did not come. God told Samuel that Saul was hiding amongst the bags. And that's where they found Saul, their king, hiding. But when the people saw how tall and handsome Saul was, they shouted, Long live the king! Saul looked like he'd be the perfect king, but it wasn't long before that king turned out to be a disaster. Not long after, God's people went off to fight their enemy, and God had told Saul to wait until Samuel came. Samuel was the one who was to offer the special sacrifice. But Saul's men were becoming increasingly afraid the Philistines might attack them at any moment. Some of Saul's men began to run away, so Saul panicked. He couldn't wait any longer for Samuel. So Saul did what God had said only Samuel should do. He offered a special sacrifice to God. Just when Saul had finished making the sacrifice, Samuel arrived. Saul tried to make excuses for what he'd done, but Samuel stopped him because Saul had disobeyed God. God would choose someone else to be king. But still Saul didn't learn. Not long after, Saul went off with his army to fight another enemy. God had told Samuel to tell Saul that he would win the battle. But when he did, he had to destroy everything that belongs to the enemy. That's exactly what happened. Saul won. But he decided to keep his enemy's best sheep and cows. Saul went to Samuel and said, I have obeyed God. But Samuel could hear the noise the sheep and cows were making. First, Saul blamed his soldiers for keeping the sheep and cows. Then he said he took them so he could offer them as gifts to God. And finally, he said he took the sheep and cows because he was scared of the soldiers. Excuse after excuse after excuse. Saul had disobeyed God, but he never admitted it, and he never said that he was sorry either. The people wanted a king like all the other nations, like everyone else around them. And they got a king who looked impressive, who looked the part. Saul was tall and handsome. He looked like he would be a great king. But he disobeyed God. Over and over again, making excuses over and over again, he did not listen to God. Saul was not a good king. He did not listen to God. Children, we follow the perfect King Jesus, who always obeyed what God said, who always listened to him, who always followed his instructions from his Father in heaven. He always perfectly listened and obeyed. We follow that great King. Are you trusting and listening to him?